Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars and welcome to another Eclipse GSX video. I know it's been a little while, but this has been the plan all along. I bought this in the summer, but it was always going to be a winter project and it's January, so it's winter and we are kind of nestled in the shop ready to get to work on this and a bunch of other projects. And I'm so excited about this because as you guys can probably tell, I'm an 80s, 90s kid, and I just geek out over stuff like this that came out when I was a wee little lad. So what we're gonna do with this build is gonna be super cool. It's gonna be like a horsepower TV series like I used to grow up watching every Saturday and Sunday morning, kind of like all the other cars we do. Um, but for this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it to stage zero. So everybody always talks about we're doing a stage one and a stage two and no one really knows what that means exactly. Uh, so we're going to do that but add in our own little flavor. Peter and I are going to do modifications to this in each video of the series uh, to kind of one up the car every time. So this first video right now is going to be stage zero. We're going to fix everything that's broken and just make it be mechanically a brand new 1995 Eclipse. It's going to run and drive beautifully after this video and then in the next video we're going to start with some easy bolt-ons, a stage one. Then the next time we're going to go a little bit bigger, maybe a bigger turbo, a downpipe, something like that. Then stage three, we're going to get a little crazier, maybe with a fuel system, all while we build a forged engine. And I already bought a donor engine from the junkyard. So we're going to kind of treat this as if we're back in the year 1995. We just bought this car and we're kind of dipping our toes in with modifications. So anyway, this is going to be such a cool series. We're going to have parts sprawled out on a table and we're just going to pluck them right off, install them, go outside, make some rips, test it on the dyno. I'm super pumped. I hope you guys are as well. And with that, we got to start off by going for a test drive because we have a horrible growling noise and this can't be a brand new Eclipse with a growling noise. Oh, oh she is slow. <laughs> All right, anyway, we got to diagnose this growling noise and this happens whether or not the clutch is engaged or disengaged. Here, take a listen. And it'll growl down as we slow down. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear that. So it doesn't matter what the transmission is doing. So this could be a differential issue, but it also could just simply be a wheel bearing. So here's a quick wheel bearing test for you. Just drive like a maniac. Yep, when I turn right, it gets really quiet. That's good, that is very good. So basically we unloaded the right side of the vehicle and the noise goes away and it's very obvious in the car. So that would point to a right side wheel bearing. And I also think it's coming from the rear as well. Yeah, she's loud. And in the first video on this car, we already swapped all the wheels and tires. It has like 20 year old tires, um, but that made no difference at all. So we're obviously gonna get new tires, but I think we have to start off with a wheel bearing. Let's go back to the shop and see if we can see if that's our smoking gun. All right, let's see if we can hear this bad bearing up close and personal. I, I hope it's a wheel bearing. Let's see. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a wheel bearing. You're gonna hear a little bit of scraping from the brake pad and the rotor. That's normal even without the brakes applied. But let's compare to this side. Oh yeah, nothing. You don't hear that growl anymore. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we definitely have to start off with that wheel bearing on that side, 250,000 miles. It's probably just time to do some wheel bearings. All right, old Koenig wheels coming off. This thing definitely needs more low. We're gonna be doing some suspension mods as well, and we're still gonna strip this car down, paint the entire thing, and do the facelift bumpers and the wing and everything. Um, but we're gonna do all the mechanical stuff first, including all the performance stuff. So then after it's tuned and everything mechanically is done, we just drop the entire engine transmission out as one unit, send this thing to the body shop, have them paint the engine compartment, and I'm just gonna pretend it's 1995 again. All right, so first step, we're gonna swing the caliper and the bracket off as one. And yeah, these pads are getting low. This outer pad is, the rotors are in great shape, um, but I am looking for something a little larger. Let me know in the comments, guys. I wanted to get some kind of factory brake upgrade. Uh, so maybe something off of like an Evo. I did CTS of E-Brembo's and my Trans Am. If you guys have any experience with the 2G Eclipse and upgrading to big brakes that aren't like $4,000 from an aftermarket company, let me know in the comments, that'd be great. Next up is the gigantic axle nut. 
That's a 32 millimeter for that. All right, so with that, our axle now moves in and out. And our next step is four bolts behind here on the spindle. Oh, she's tight. Okay, nothing a little manpower can't take care of. That should work now. How do you say torque in Italian? I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't learn car talk, Peter. How do you say torque in, in Japanese? Torque. Seriously? Yeah. Or did you just say take torque and add a Japanese twist to it? That's how Japanese is spoken. That's right. the... Then I'm going to say it's a torcolini. <laughs> Here we go. Now it's a pasta. <laughs> it's a delicious pasta. <laughs> All right. Uh, a little, little sway bar link is getting in our way. All right, so we've gotten all four bolts out and it's been 250,000 miles. This guy is not just gonna pull out. Um, so here is our new bearing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an old random bolt that happens to have the same thread and we're gonna thread it in from the backside. All right, and this bolt is a little bit longer so we can thread it in quite a bit. And we don't have to worry about damaging the old bearing since we're getting rid of it. So let's thread this guy in. And then if you have an air hammer, that is definitely the easiest route to go, but a normal hammer will work as well. This backing plate is just kind of rusted on a little. A couple of love taps. There we go. Oh man, if this was a Chicago car, there'd be no love taps on this backing plate. This thing is practically brand new. Look at that. If you can't appreciate a sweet backing plate, well, maybe you're just from an area that doesn't salt the road like six months out of the year. But something I think we can all appreciate all year round is saving money on food and gas. And for that, there's Upside. And I absolutely love this app. Every once in a while when I load it up, I get surprised with an extra bonus. So look at this, 25 cents per gallon cash back rewards is activated right now for me. That is awesome. I mean, look at this. I'm already gonna get 24 cents per gallon back on gasoline that I need to buy anyway. So you can see this really adds up and it pretty much works everywhere. It'll automatically scan the area you're in or you can type in the city or zip code and it'll search for deals everywhere and show it to you on a map. So not only are you saving gas money, but you're also saving money eating out at restaurants. Look at this, 19% cash back, 15, 20% cash back. And then look at how many grocery stores this works with. Look at this, 8%, 7%, 8% cash back on food at the grocery store. We all need that. Now, my favorite part is just how easy Upside is. So you just check in, buy what you're gonna buy, and then your cash back rewards automatically go into your Upside account. And then from there, you can deposit your money into your bank account, your PayPal account, e-gift cards, and much more. And the best part is you guys can get Upside for free right now by clicking on my link in the video description box or the pinned comment. And don't forget to use coupon code LEGIT that's gonna get you an extra 25 cents back on every gallon of your first tank of gas. So a big thanks to Upside for saving me a ton of money and for sponsoring this video. Yeah, this guy's bad for sure. And here's our new one. It's silent. Silence! This is what we want. Okay, so let's go over to our hydraulic press and transfer over our hub. Speaking of backing plates. This one's off of my Lexus, my IS300, and it just, totally it was yeah. flopping around I didn't even i wouldn't even do any work to it it just was just flopping around and it just rusted completely through so it's called self-clearance now it's, it's race kinda, weight it kind of fits right perfectly into your beard <laughs> i was... am iron man <laughs> <laughs> i did not think we had the throw for this that is crazy there we go There we go, falls on the bag of salt. So we're gonna be reusing this guy. Sometimes the inner race will be stuck to the hub here and we gotta get a little violent with that guy. All right, so here are the inner workings of the wheel bearings. Just a bunch of little ball bearings. And this grease is old and nasty. It's pretty gritty in here too. All right guys, next up is safety. Safety first because we're using this. And we have to cut this race off. We're gonna go on a diagonal here. And take your time, we don't wanna damage the part that we need. little paparini. So the key to not damaging the hub here is to not cut all the way through. You just need a little line in there and a punch and a hammer. Oh, it cracked. Yep. See, we just made that little hairline in there. All right, so with the crack, we should be able to slide this off now. There we go.
Done. So as you can see, we haven't cut into anything. So we're golden. We'll just clean this up now. All right, with everything cleaned up, we can go ahead and press our new wheel bearing on like so. Line this guy up a little better. All right, let's take a listen. This is what it sounded like before. And this is what it sounds like after. Nothing. Oh, she's tight. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, let's get this back on the car and go for a ride. All right, I've already cleaned up the spindle. We're just doing a little bit of anti-seize. So 27 years from now, when I need to do another wheel bearing, it'll come out much easier. That will be on legit geriatrics streetcars. And I would have definitely forgotten I did this. All right, we'll do a little bit here on the backing plate as well. And then some inside of here because it's not threaded all the way through. There is a shoulder and that can get rusted up. So we're not putting this on the threads, just the shoulder. All right, back on with our backing plate. All right, now we can slide in our new bearing with the hub. That's what holds the backing plate in. So kind of a little bit of a dance here to get this all to work. And we have the axle to contend with. All right, with the bearing bolted in, just have to secure our axle. Big washer, our axle nut. I got a little bit of anti-seize going on before our rotor. Although this will be a short-lived rotor, so we're gonna get some different brakes. All right, then our brake pads and caliper. All right, we'll torque this wheel on, but for now, let's give it a listen. All right, so this is what it sounded like when we spun it before. And don't mind the brake noise, that's normal, but this is what it sounds like now. That's good. Perfect. Can't hear anything. Yeah, it's all, all silent except for the brakes. Yeah, so. we're good. All right, so we have a new wheel bearing on the passenger side and off camera, we replaced the wheel bearing on the driver side rear as well. Let's go for a test drive. All right, I can already tell you our wheel bearing is fixed. Just driving to our test ground here. It's silent. Oh yeah. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Alignment is perfect. This thing handles like it's on rails, like everything has been replaced at some point. And yeah, she's in good shape. All right, let's go back, do some more work on her. All right, with our noise gone, we're just gonna do some quick maintenance on the differential and something a couple of you guys had noted in the reveal video was you thought I had the wrong differential that would have been for an automatic car. Um, and we can see here BFB, that is an open dip, unfortunately. Um, but this is the proper ratio, 3.545. Uh, so this is the factory manual transmission diff. And I do think I'm gonna get an LSD, but I just wanna drain the fluid on this one, take a look at it in case we decide to rebuild this and then we'll pop in some synthetic fluid. But the drive shaft, the center support bearing all checks out. There's actually two on here. So lots of little parts to fail. And then this transmission, it looks fairly new or at least clean. Like maybe they had it apart to do a clutch or something like that. I'm not really sure. Oh man, but look at this. Oh wow, our wastegate arm totally came off. Huh. And I mean, this thing is feeling so, so slow. It was making a little bit of boost, but not a lot. All right, well, we need to fix that. We'll pop it back on. This was loose a few months ago, but we'll have to secure that guy in there. And we have an O2 sensor bung right here for a wide band. Peter, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Throw a wide band in? We're gonna definitely throw a wide band in, but also if we have a wide band in, if we know the air fuel ratio, we could up the boost. Yeah. <laughs> and we could do it for like no money. We could just simply make a little slit in the boost reference to the wastegate actuator and bleed it off. So when you install a boost controller on your car, all you're doing is bleeding off some of that reference, that boost reference and tricking the wastegate into thinking that the turbo is not pumping out as much boost as you want. That's, that's all you're doing effectively. So remember they had the old school manual. Yeah. yeah, they had the old school valve. knobs. <laughs> it was literally just a T in the vacuum line. You'd run it in the car to a mechanical knob. We could definitely do something cool. Uh, oh, I think, <laughs> yes. What if we ran in line to that? <laughs> this is our boost controller. We're building our own boost controller in this video. We're gonna see if we can make this thing fast. All right, let's do a little bit more maintenance and then we'll, we'll do that. Oh, we gotta see if we have an aftermarket clutch. There's a little inspection thing right here. 
Oh, Let's just yeah, take that off. I'm dying to see what we got. It feels, the clutch feels great. All right, hang on. We found a way, way easier way to look at our clutch. Oh yeah, you can, you can see in there pretty good. It's got a yellow pressure plate and there's some numbers on there. Let's try and clean that off. All right, that's good. Hold on, I think I might have to literally use the camera to zoom in. All right, guys, tell me if you can see what these are. Oh, ACT? Yeah, that looks like an ACT. Zero one two two zero 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 eight. I don't know. Here, get get your googling device out, Peter. <laughs> All right, guys, we definitely found the pressure plate. We have an MB zero one zero X stamped right below the longer part number. Uh, Four hundred five bucks just for the pressure plate. Cool. So that's a good one. So we don't know about the clutch, but I'm assuming they went with a pretty darn good clutch too, if this is their pressure plate. All right. Something else we discovered in here is the flywheel. We have an aluminum flywheel and this came with a steel flywheel and you can see it's kind of hard to see, um, but the ring for the teeth for the starter are bolted in. See, there's a bolt right there. Uh, and that is aluminum. And here she is, our aluminum flywheel. So we have spun the engine around. We don't see any markings on here. It's got a really good pressure plate, an aluminum flywheel. I'm gonna assume a good clutch in there as well. And that's a good thing because it's one less thing we have to buy. All right, so we're gonna see what our differential fluid looks like in the back. And we always wanna open up the fill first because if this is frozen in there, you don't wanna drain your fluid and then not be able to get anything back in. This differential is gonna be fine. Ooh. Hmm. Did you see that first bit? Yeah. Oh, that is a piece. This is a piece of something. I don't believe. Oh no, it's it's not metal though. Oh, it's just like. Oh wait, no, hold on. Oh, it is. Oh, that's weird. Look, dude, it's red. Dude, it's it's rolling out. It's a piece of rolled up metal. Can yeah. you see that? Uh, yeah. Look at that. What in the world? Hold on. Let's let's clean this up and put it on the bench. This is like Indiana Jones car edition here. I don't know what this rolled up piece of metal thing is. What in a diff would look like that? I know of nothing. Oh, it's definitely. Yeah. Usually with open diffs, they're either just kind of working or they're totally broken. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. All right. Well, it's a good thing that we want to put a limited slip differential in there. And I believe there was a factory option. Uh, for a limited slip, which I'd be okay with a factory limited slip, or if there's an aftermarket good one. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section. Even if you guys have one for sale, uh, you can always email me at legitstreetcars at gmail.com. I'm definitely looking for some DSM parts right now. So if you got a limited slip diff, let me know. I need one. All right, we're going back together with some AMSOIL. And even though we're going to be replacing the diff, I don't think there's really anything wrong with this. It's an open diff and it seems to be functioning just fine. So it'll be good until we get our limited slip in here. And I love these Amsoil squeeze pouches are the best. You don't need any kind of transfer pump. Good to the last drop. And then right there, we're good. And then as soon as it starts coming out, you know you're full. Man, that's good enough. Perfect. Diff service complete. Oh, right, hang on, gotta do the Alex click. Click, clickety clack. Click. Okay. You're good. We are going to fix this wastegate actuator arm and it just requires a cotter pin. That's all that fell out. All right. I don't have a small enough cotter pin, but this will definitely do. There we go. That's not going anywhere. All right. So that's fixed. All right. Let's throw the wideband in and then let's make a boost controller, a manual, a very manual boost controller. <laughs> <laughs> let's get this cap off here. Okay. Hey, I didn't break off the welds. That's nice. All right, we got our brand new wideband O2 sensor going in like so. This is a real race car now, people. We can measure AFR. Man, I would love to know the history of this car. It's got the bung right here. It's got full exhaust. It's got a pretty serious exhaust manifold. It's not like a really cheap one off eBay that you can just slap on. Like this exhaust manifold will handle a ton of power. I'm keeping it. So what, what was done to this? It's so weird. It needed a clutch too, so I don't know. It'd be nice to know if this transmission was built up too because these are very expensive to get built. There's hardly any parts for them as well. No, I don't know. All right, we're going to check the front differential as well. This time we have Peter's big McDonald's cup. It's horchata. Horchata. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's from the Mexican place. It's horchata. Delicious. Good stuff. Oh, whoa. Whoa, I was not expecting that. That is our front diff? Yikes. Dude, 
This did not exhibit like any issues whatsoever. Like a couple minutes ago, I was like, we don't need to check the front diff, it's fine. And and now we have, it's pooing. Yeah, well that's not, that's like, not good, not good. The diff is pooing, right? Wow. I mean, it worked fine. <laughs> There's basically no oil in the front diff. Jeez. Dude, that is insane. Yeah, it's a, it's a pinkish weird color too. Nothing could have mixed in this. Yeah, it's not it's not connected to anything else. And there, there and it's not like there's metal chunks or anything. It's a uh, what? It's, it's a viscous coupling. I don't know what's viscous in it, but all right. So the next step, really, uh, in figuring out what's going on with this differential, is just to give it a taste here, real quick. I'm <laughs> just kidding. That was close, though. <laughs> oh man, that would have been nasty. Uh, sure. How much, guys? How much would it take for you to drink this? I mean, you're pretty much signing your life away, right? I don't know. This would kill you, I think. I don't know. We're not going to find out today, um, but what we are going to find out is if we have an issue with our front differential because we are going to go make a water box outside and try and do a burnout. So let me just explain to you how this all works. So what we have here is the transmission, and this is a center diff or transfer case, if you will. So you can kind of use either term. Uh, the axles for the front wheels are connected to the transmission. And so basically when you're driving this thing around normally, it's front wheel drive. When those front wheels slip, there is a viscous coupler inside of here that then sends power to the rear wheels via the drive shaft and the differential. Um, so what could have happened, and the reason why maybe we didn't hear any issues with this or, or experience any issues here is because essentially this isn't really doing much if you're not beating on the car and spinning the tires and stuff like that. Um, I would imagine with essentially no fluid, we would have heard something at some point, but it, it sounds fine. There's no metal in here. Um, and the car is very, very weak and underpowered and it lived its life in Nevada. So it really, you know, the chances of it spinning the tires and utilizing this are pretty small as yeah, still gooping down. Um, so <laughs> I've never seen anything like this, but uh, there's a chance that this is okay. I mean, either way, we're gonna have this rebuilt when we do our built engine. But for now, uh, we're gonna fill it up with some fluid. So we're gonna use a GL5 rated gear oil. Um, and there is GL4 as well. That's what this calls for, but GL5 uh, just has some more additives in there. It's just a little bit more extreme. Um, apparently though, we don't need anything extreme because nothing works too, or strawberry milkshake. Um, so anyway, we'll get some diff fluid in there and then we are gonna go try and do a burnout um, to see if it sends power to the rears. If it just does a front wheel drive burnout, we can pretty much guarantee that the viscous coupler is shot. Uh, and in order to have an even better chance of doing a burnout, Peter, we need more boost. We need a manual <laughs> boost control. Let's do that. We raise the boost so we can do the burnout. <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. Before we raise the boost, we, we got to get oil in there. Uh, we're going to try and blow some of this stuff out. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, seal that up. Down, yeah. Oh, this is nasty. Okay, we're gonna kind of seal this guy up before it blasts me in the face. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? It's alien goo. Ah! So nasty. Okay. All right. It's like a Jackson Pollock now. Can we turn this into a t-shirt? Splatter, <laughs> splatter. It is artwork. This is modern art. Yeah, Here, is... look at this. This is automotive modern art. Yeah. We're actually, we could probably put that in a gallery. Yeah. I mean, with today's modern art standards, this is probably some of the best work out there, and unfortunately. Who, who uses actual fluids in their art? Yeah, right now they're taking like ketchup and squirting it on a piece of paper. And that's like art now. I mean, come on now. All right, so we're getting some new differential fluid in there. Um, and we did talk to an expert in the DSM differential transfer case transmission world. Uh, and he said that what we have inside of here is actually a 75W250 redline heavy duty shock proof or something like that and gear oil. So he said that's actually normal if it's been in there for a long time. I guess you're supposed to more frequently flush that stuff out. Um, so yeah, he said it only takes 0.4 of a quart. Uh, so I don't think we got that much out, but then again, if we would have blown more air in there, it was just continually coming out. So what we saw <laughs> is actually normal if you use that fluid and then don't like maintain it. 
Uh, we're not going with that shockproof craziness again. We're, uh, we're gonna do the 7590. I think that's gonna be fine. And we already flushed a little bit of that goopy stuff out as well. So, you know, we're still gonna test that viscous though. For science, we need to do burnouts. <laughs> and we need more boost. Oh, there it is. You got it? Yeah. yeah, very little, very little went in there. Cool, that fluid just looks so much better. And you know what? We, uh, we should definitely check this. It's just so easy to swap out all these fluids. Like you might as well just do it every so often. All right. We're gonna check this transmission out. This is also 75 W90 weight gear oil. This transmission feels buttery smooth. Everything feels great. So in other words, what I'm trying to say here is I don't expect any weirdness from our transmission. Please no weirdness. Please no goopy stuff. Here we go. Here, oh, oh, eh? That's looking normal. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I'm glad we're doing it. It's not brand new, but it's not bad either. I don't know. It might have a little. Yeah, you can see the glitter. Got a little tiny bit. No chunks. Yeah, it's definitely got some glitter going on. Yeah, the trance feels fine though. But yeah, overall, this looks okay. I think we'll be all right. Let's get some new fluid in here too. All right, we're going back in with our 75W90 and this severe gear fluid does have the friction modifier needed for a limited slip differential. Obviously we don't need it for this transmission or these differentials, but it's already in the fluid. So if you have an LSD, it's already got it in there. Oh, I see a drip. We got two in there so far. Oh, come on. You're gonna make me crack open another one, aren't you? All right, we're on our third pouch here. This should be it. Oh yeah. oh yeah, okay, yeah, we flushed it too. <laughs> all right, all right, that's good. Click. All right guys, here is our boost reference line. It comes right off of this tube that comes off the turbocharger full of boost pressure and it goes right here to our wastegate actuator. Let's take it off. Hehehehe, <laughs> hehehehe. Weak. just ripped there. Oh, wow, you're right. Oh yeah, part of it stuck right there. Okay. So if we wanted to be super hacky, we just want to be like normal level hacky, uh, we would just make a little slit with a razor blade in this line and it would bleed off boost, which would then require the turbocharger to work harder to create the proper amount of boost to open the wastegate. So it has a spring in there that's set to a specific boost pressure. So that's how you make more boost. But what we're gonna do is not that hacky. I mean, come on now. We're gonna cut this guy in half and now we should be able to slide in our T. Okay. And this little plastic T is off of the supercharged C4 Corvette. So it's the circle of high performance taking care of each other. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, coming to legitstreetcars.com near you, we have the exclusive Legit Street Boost Controller. It's actually got some of that red goopy stuff from the differential. It comes with every single one of them. Uh, so what we have going on here is our air blow gun with a hose adapter down to a piece of vacuum. And then that vacuum tube goes into what used to be on our pneumatic bleeder. And we had to heat this up to get these other pieces of vacuum line inside of it. So this is going to be in the car. And then that leads us all the way to this T right here. And this T is gonna connect to the wastegate on this side and the turbo charge pipe on this side. Now moving along over here, we have installed another T. So that one was off the C4. This one is off the Mer Honda or Honda Cadiz. And we have cut the factory line going to the fuel pressure regulator in order to run a boost gauge, which I've had for about 15 years. This is a test boost gauge that I would use even at the dealership. And we will mount that one right there. Maybe a little zip tie. Or... Factory. Actually, we don't even need a zip tie. I have so much hose that we can just kind of do one of these. There we go. Ugh. Let me just adjust it real quick. Okay, cool. So this is an adjustable boost gauge? Yeah, it's adjustable. All right, so there's our boost gauge. All right, so at this point, we are gonna drive the car. So the spark plugs and the fuel filter, they all look practically new, so we don't have to do those. And then when we do the new fuel system and the, the bigger boosted engine, we'll get different plugs anyway. But uh, yeah, we're ready right now for another test drive to do a burnout and to feel more boost and power. All right, guys, this is what we're working with. Oh. That's nice. There's some kind of fluid in our lines. <laughs> I'll just psh, psh it out the side. Yeah, we'll have to do that first time we get into boost. Uh, and we hooked up our wide band, so we just have this running off of the cigarette lighter and our box, just like we did with the Grand National. And then, of course, we have the boost gauge right there. 
All right, I'm gonna watch the boost. Peter is on the box, the box of AFR. All right, let's see what happens here. All right, 10 PSI of boost is the most we got. Peter? It went down to 10 on the AFRs. Straight up 10 AFR? Yeah, well that's as low as it goes, but it, it well, was yeah, kind of right. tickling down there, yeah. Wow, that is like really rich. Yeah. Wait a minute, that just means we have room to grow. Yeah. <laughs> we can afford some, some boost. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. So I'm rolling this up, I'm freezing. I'm gonna get into a little bit of boost to clear out the lines. Go ahead. Hi. Nothing came out? No. I think we need more boost. We need more boost yeah. to clear the line. Oh, okay. This is ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We are literally cleaning out a line that we used. That was, I think that was the brake fluid extractor line. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's, we're using Eclipse GSX boost pressure to clear out brake fluid from a line that's connected to a wastegate actuator. So this, so this isn't really the boost controller. I'm the boost controller. Yeah, you're that's, in charge of the boost. I'm the boost controller. All right, I'm gonna give you a little boost. <laughs> Hey, that gave me that. That, yeah, that gave us a little juice, boost. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna get into it, and then you slowly. Yeah, open I'm actually. It. We don't want to give it right all next the to the microphone so they can hear it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm gonna get into some boost. So there's our ten. Oh, <laughs> we got up to like thirteen. Nice. <laughs> no way, it's like hitting a nitrous switch, <laughs> like a little nitrous switch. <laughs> That is so a crazy. 25 hit. Yeah, that was like a yeah, a 25 HP hit there. Oh no way! So that you pretty much opened it all the way. Uh, yeah, I got a little, <laughs> I got a little carried away. Well, you know what? Then let's get super carried away. Let's just hold it open the whole time. Okay, and see what it does. And just see what happens. Which I mean, at that point, we are bleeding off all of its boost, the so, wastegate actuator's boost reference. Yeah. It'll go to the, either the most amount of boost that this turbo will create, which is a lot. It's gonna basically just now, the exhaust is just gonna push on that wastegate spring and, oh, yeah. and potentially open it. So we still will be limited um, to a certain degree. So go ahead, wide open throttle me, Peter. All right, you're, you're wide open. All right, wide open. All right, you watch the boost. You can hear it. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting like about 13. It's like a three PSI boost of boost <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid hey how's afr uh it was good it's still still down at the down the old mid tons man so we could run way more boost yeah we need more boost <laughs> you saw it here first on legit street cars the uh air pressure blower boost, boost gauge. controller yeah gauge. yeah no one says anymore what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, well, let's go for another hit. I love having good wheel bearings. This car is solid. Solid boost. Still 10? Uh, yeah. 10. Darn, how can we get more boost? Bigger turbo. I mean, I know, yeah, bigger turbo, yes. But with this, this we should be able to produce way more boost we... with this turbo. It's probably, the wastegate actuator has probably got a very, very weak spring in it. Can we just put a little extra to, juicy spring on it? Yeah, we could juice up the spring for yeah. sure. Do we have like something laying around? Or? We could double up the spring in oh, the wastegate yeah. actuator. We could do that. But should we do it? Yes! I can't believe you even asked that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's so stupid. If we're gonna do this, we might as well do a double up spring. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. We only got 13 PSI of boost. I yeah. mean, we should, especially with 10 AFR that's like dangerously rich, yeah. it's almost like the engine is asking us for more boost for safety purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs some more safety boost, yeah. All right, we're listening, Eclipse Motor. <laughs> we will give you what you want. All right, guys, we cannot take this wastegate apart. Uh, it is the stock one. But fear not, Peter and I have come up with another idea, which is a bungee cord. And so we've taken off the rod from the wastegate actuator. Uh, oh, that's melting a little. Uh, just a little. Yeah, just a little. And we are going to keep this wastegate shut. I mean, it'll still have some tension. The bungee cord is now going to be the boost pressure limiter. And I think, hang on, yeah. That's the right amount of tension. Yeah, I think that's the proper bungee tension. Oh yeah, for, we can probably tune it too. With the, yeah. Just yeah, we just gotta move it over. It's yeah. So anyway, let's uh. Try that. This is weird. Let's see what happens. So it's only making like six psi, so we clearly need more tension. We're gonna give it max tension. That should hold it. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> All 
All right, let's see what we got now, people. Ah. Yeah, it's about 12. Yeah, that didn't really do anything. All right, so a couple of things here. Either that's all the turbo has, which I, I don't believe is the case, uh, or the blow-off valve itself could be bleeding the boost off. That is possible, it's just the stock one. I mean, at this point, that bungee cord is pretty solid at keeping that wastegate closed, and then it's coincidentally about where we were before, so. Uh, we tried, people, we tried. We're gonna have to do real modifications in the next video, which is, I'm, I'm totally good with that. At least now we know we have a fully, properly functioning vehicle. All the fluids have been changed. We did a compression check in the last video and an oil change and everything. Uh, spark plugs were good, so everything is super solid on this 95 Eclipse. I bought this car from a guy who had just driven it like 2,000 miles home, and then I bought it a few days later. He had the AC on, everything was great. Uh, so we've just fixed up little odds and ends here, done all of its maintenance, and now we can start from scratch. All right, we gotta test out our viscous coupling device. <laughs> was waxing Mustangs and Camaros back in the day. It just launches like crazy. Yeah, you, have, you can see the little the little streak marks there. It did like a little bit of slip and then it just hooked. Okay, cool. So, I mean, it seems to be working. Otherwise, we would have just been roasting the front tire. Yeah, yeah, I would have kept going. All right, let's do it again. Right. <laughs> Peter, you gotta feel this. This is so cool. It looks awesome. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we did check the bungee cord. It is holding the internal wastegate shut for sure. Um, but we're just getting about like 12, 13 PSI out of it, which is right around the stock boost pressure. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, it could be that's all the turbo's making, which I highly doubt. It could also be a leaking blow-off valve as well. Uh, we're gonna get to the bottom of it in the next video, and we're gonna modify this car. We're definitely gonna start off our stage one project uh, with a completely new intake and a new blow-off valve, and we're gonna get some tuning software so we can actually tune this thing, the air-fuel ratio and everything. So we should be able to make it much quicker in the next video. And we are going to figure out how to raise up this boost. I think we can get closer to 20 PSI uh, out of this first generation Eclipse Turbo. That's what's on here right now. So anyway, I hope you guys are as excited about part three, stage one in part three as I am. I can't wait to get into this car. It's so much fun. Uh, so with that, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if for some crazy, insane reason you haven't already. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll see all of you in the next video. is gonna be stage zero. We're gonna, we're gonna fix. Wait, what fell? Oh. Grading oh. <laughs> to fat. All right, next up. Oh, good, ready? So we can hit it from the back. <laughs> Cause they're both. And we, yeah. But something I think we can appre, but the. Now I'm completely lost where I'm at. This way, spinny. Right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. A little more this way. Oh. We replaced the wheel. Yeah. I mean, it's got a wide band. It's got a different, serious exhaust. It's got it. It's got it. When we start, but either way, we're. And this stuff does actually have. Okay. And this T is going to. Con yeah.